Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In the previous episode, I tried to send a mission to Phobos and met with a lot of problems. And what we discovered is, one thing I already knew is we need more solar panel ray. The problem is how much all that costs and which way to go on this tech tree. Um, obviously this is the solar panel I've been using, and these don't look particularly appetizing altogether. Uh, and for 400 science, but this might be the path to go for future better solar panels and especially the RTGs which I would really like to unlock or or it could be this direction with uh, with the better batteries maybe the RTGs are over here so that's one thing another thing that we needed was uh, better communication satellites around Mars right because uh, we really don't have a very good communication system around Mars we're constantly out of communication um, so that is another problem and so we need to but if, even for that the big obstacle is the solar panels we need the solar panels in order to have uh, reliable communication satellites around Mars so I think I'm gonna go in this direction hopefully this is the right direction to go don't have an uh, infinite amount of science here what the heck is that oh that's a snap Snap is a is a RTG. Okay, but we're a little bit short on science. Um, this one doesn't seem to have anything too much better, but maybe there's more over here. But that's another 500 science. I'd really like Snap. Um, that uh, a lot of Snaps would be very helpful. Uh, it depends how big they are, though. Ah, uh, okay. So what we really need to do is gain more science, and uh, and the short way of doing that is the moon at this point. I don't know if uh, sending stuff around Earth is a good idea. It's very expensive altogether, in terms of delta v. Let's say uh, we really don't have to worry about funds, but uh, yeah. Sending stuff around Earth is going to be tough, so it's just better to send it around the moon. And so that is the plan, but I've already done a moon lander. So perhaps there is a way to try something new. And so we have this idea. Uh, I have never launched out of Baikonur, which is the Russian space center. Oh, well, one of a few, but the main one. Uh, most famous, most legendary, if you will, and I think it is time to develop a uh, a uh, rocket with Russian engines that will be able to uh, send a mission to the moon. It is a thing that I have not uh, done successfully, and launching from Baikonur is something I need to learn how to do. It's not something I know how to do. So this is going to be sort of a testing, building and testing mission, uh, the building and testing episode. And so we need to take a look at our launchers and also the engines we have at our disposal. We don't have all of the all of the engines in the Soviet engine pack or even uh, the other modified engines yet. Uh, so, but it looks like we have all of the usual suspects, indeed. So maybe that's an interesting thing. Now, what I'll start out with is a controller. The Ranger one is the only one that's been uh, very reliable in terms of uh, giving, uh, working with a remote tech so far. And let's say we want a payload of... Let's say we want a pretty hefty payload since uh, our base engine is inevitably going to be reasonably large, I think. Well, it could be any one of these. But we could go pretty big. Um, let's go for 10 tons to to uh, to the moon. And I'll scale down from there. Alright, uh, give me some time. I'll come back with something. Okay, so here's what we've got. But I've uh, done the numbers based on my experiences out of Cape Canaveral. So Baikonur will be different, and so I'm going to 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, but I've, the payload is just uh, my normal uh, dummy alcohol payload uh, with uh, the necessary antenna works and all that, so a controller, etc. So that's the situation there. Nothing too fancy. Um, and we don't even have a decoupler for that, so it's just sort of sitting there. Uh, this is the lunar transfer stage, and the engine for that is a RD-0146, uh, uh, and so that's basically the Russian equivalent of the RL-10, and it lies somewhere between the thrust of the RL-10A3 and the RL-10B2, so sort of a middle ground between those two. It's, I think, a little bit heavier. Yeah, it is a little bit heavier. The RL-10... If I uh, take a look, where uh, where do we have our RL tents? Uh, procedural parts was giving me a lot of trouble, especially with the boosters on the side. Oh, uh, I think uh, we've got RL tens here. Yes, uh, RL tens uh, come in at 167 kilograms, and so a little bit heavier. But that's that's not a big deal. Well, but technically, well anyway, uh, if I was putting more than one, it would be. But uh, there's only one there. Um, the engines for the bottom, I, I initially started out with uh, RD-180 in the center, uh, but uh, things were not working out in terms of the... Uh, well, what I had was actually a second stage with the, with the NK-43, uh, and that is because uh, it has a wonderful thrust to weight ratio, and as you can see it's got a max thrust of 1755. Um, but a mass of 1.4 tons, which is a very good ratio, and of course it was designed to be uh, a second stage engine, so that's important. I I, I want to keep those things consistent. Uh, so then uh, that was the second stage, and this was the first stage, uh, but the numbers weren't working out uh, quite as nicely as I was looking for in terms of uh, thrust, because uh, the thrust of this is pretty high as it is. And I don't want to go to the uh, full four-chamber version because uh, I think uh, we really shouldn't even have that right now in this stage of the in this stage of the tech tree. Uh, this is uh, this is about equivalent of the RS uh, 64. Well, I mean it's not equivalent in any normal respect, but uh, in terms of technology, I think or uh, thrust, if you will. But uh, so the numbers weren't working out. And so I started to play with side boosters, starting with the RD191, which is uh, what they're uh, using currently for the Angara uh, sequence of rockets. Uh, so, but uh, there, uh, well, I mean, uh, probably if I uh, ended up with six boosters like this, the, Angara, uh, the RD191 would have worked out just fine. But I was only uh, using uh, two boosters, and so. Uh, but eventually I switched over to the NK-33 and the reason why is because you'll note the mass of this is 3.23 uh, tons and the thrust is 2079. It has a nice ISP, uh, much, well it's uh, reasonably higher than the NK-33, but the NK-33's mass is 1.22 tons while its thrust is not so much lower than the RD-191. And if you take a look at the tanks for this, uh, I don't know why it's negative. Oh, I hate doing this. Uh, okay. Oh, that changed the numbers again. Um, see, does the pro uh, 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 procedural parts has not been playing nice with me. Okay, that that's about right. Oh, now it's negative again. I thought we had fixed these sorts of problems before. Uh Okay, well that's close enough. Let me just save that before anything else goes negative. Let me just quickly check that we don't have negative available volumes in any of the other tanks. Okay, uh, so yeah, um, uh, note that the dry mass of this is 2 tons. Well, if the dry mass of this entire tank is 2 tons, and you slap a 3.23 ton engine on it, well that's 5.23 tons, whereas uh, right now the configuration, the empty mass is about 3.25 tons. It's a big difference. And so uh, that's why I went with the NK33s in the end because uh, the thrust uh, weight ratio was so much better. Uh, I, after doing that, uh, the, I ended up uh, favoring more boosters and less power in the center stack. 
and I dumped the RD-180 in favor of just extending the second stage. Remember, I had the NK-43 in the second stage, so I just extended that stage so that it is now uh, the first stage, except we don't light it yet. The core stage will not be lit uh, initially because the ISP of this is too low. So we'll start out with just the boosters. And so I added a little bit of struts to make sure that wasn't too bad. And uh, that is the situation. Uh, we'll, we should be alright on the uh, Delta V because we're going to dump the fairings and the fairings are actually pretty heavy in this case. So uh, so the upper uh, par portion here is uh, 5 meters, this is 4 meters, and these are 2.5 mainly to fit the cones. Okay, actually I could add uh, fuel in the cones but I haven't done so. Okay, so let me get some uh, uh, clamps tower things here and one for the top I think and yeah I'm going to discover whether this is enough to launch from this location so let's take this out to the launch pad and see about that and just as I said, that KSP crash. So uh, for those of you who wonder how I get this all working, uh, working is a very strong term for the way I've got it right now. It's it's not really working out. So what we were looking for, Baikonur Prototype 1, launch. Uh, hello. can't even select the launch pad properly uh, right uh, how about the VAB so yeah the upgrade to 0.24 and all the attendant upgrades to the mods has not exactly made this the most stable save on the planet and I would say that there are serious lingering issues. Okay, that's geosync. Uh, we want to set the moon as a target and find out what the minimum inclination difference is. Okay, that was slow. Uh, so, rendezvous planner. Let's go with. 26.3 sounds close. No, I think we can do better than that. We're at uh, 45 here, and the moon's at 28, so we can do 17. Let's get SAS on. I think we're approaching the minimum here. Yep, 17.57. Or 5.6. Okay. We'll almost certainly use a mid-course plane change to correct that. This time at least. If uh, somebody wants to comment about a better way of doing that, I will be receptive. Okay, so... Let's try this. Lighting the NK, well we don't need this anymore. Lighting the NK33s. And releasing launch clamps when it lets me. Still isn't letting me. Add this to a list of bugs that I have. Oh. What the heck is that about? Hello. Oh, crud. What the heck? Uh, I don't want to revert to anything. Uh, let's see what this does now. Crikey. What was that about? Huh. 
Why did it go down? This is just lag, by the way. It's got plenty of thrust to uh, TWR at this stage. Oh god, don't crash into the tower now. Okay. You got a heck of a delay. Oh, oh, that's why. It's because uh, it, it, is this not being read as a communication center as a mission control? Ah, uh, I have to make a Baikonur a mission control center. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna have all sorts of problems uh, communicating. Uh, right now, it's uh, I don't know what it's communicating with right now, honestly. I'm going to extend the antenna that's on the probe here. It's probably got to stick. No, I can't do that. Oh, darn. It's probably got to snap. Uh, I've, uh, I, I hopefully you have retracted it, so hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, I'm going to start the roll program. This has not worked out very well already, so... Oh, I can sense uh, communication lapses. Oh, this is going to be bad. What kind of satellite system? Our satellite system isn't really meant for uh, high latitudes. We've got uh, apparent link to uh, TRS Polar, though I have no idea how. So one thing we can do is fuel crossfeed. I don't know if the Russians have ever done that. And of course we really haven't done that in uh, America either. Uh, the only uh, situation that's even come close as far as I know is the feeding of the fuel from the external tank into the space shuttle. But, um, but yeah, because this has the situation where the external boosters have the same fuel as the center stack. Once we, if once we get down to replacing the NK43 with uh, uh, the RD series, uh, you know the RD180, then uh, we can uh, we can fuel feed, cross feed into the center stack. So that is something. Of course, that's something SpaceX is planning. But, you know, plans, uh, I've seen lots and lots of space plans, and not all of them work out. One of the benefits of the Russian engines is that they, they almost always have throttling capabilities. So these engines can actually throttle quite substantially. And uh, the RD-180 and all the developments from the RD-170 can also do so. Oh, I just sensed a little lapse there. So this rocket is uh, only meant to uh, send uh, 10 tons to TLI. And uh, the 10 tons, the payload itself would have to figure out how to get into orbit around the moon. On the bright side, the second stage actually has quite a bit of delta V. And so it could be used for more flexible purposes as well. It's got two additional relights after uh, it's got two uh, sets of Ullage rockets. So we've got that going for us. I should mention on the frame rates that KSP is not currently maxing out anything on my computer right now. Uh, not even a single core of my processor is uh, is uh, past 50% uh, right now. RAM is quite robust, plenty left over, and uh, graphics card uh, should be quite steady. So, not really sure what's up here. I mean, I guess it's just lag intrinsic to the program because I don't see any reason why it should be so slow. It might be fraps but then again it's still not uh, uh, maybe it's fraps writing to the hard disk I don't know. K 
Okay, I think I actually want to throttle down. If that works, yeah. Because the G-forces were getting a little bit much and I could see it gimbling to try and uh, keep things steady here. Let's see. Yeah, so it's uh, throttled down a bit. Okay, I'm gonna light the core engine. Okay. Oh darn. What happened there? Okay. Very stable. Hey, we've got... Okay. That's not fair. We had it, didn't we? Huh. <sighs> okay, well, I'm just gonna see if booster separation works out. Getting a little bit wiggly here, let me continue to throttle down. Really at this point they should be thrust from the center. It's uh, the linkage between the boosters and the center stack that's causing a lot of the problem. Okay, well that's the end of the boosters. Let's see the separation and see if that works out properly. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, let's see... Pale of fairing... Oh, have I not updated it in this save? Guess not. Um, wow, we're already going awry, that's not good. Why are we already going awry? Okay, and... Well, let's just see our separations. Separation... Okay, and let's see if this engine lights properly. Obviously not a given. So where was that 1.5? Uh, I saw 1.5 T-Tab over there. Ah, uh, what? Why? I mean, where did... where was it? I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay, well this engine did not light. Oh, uh, well, the fuel flow is very unstable. Okay, well, i uh, tell you what, we can fix that. Let's see if this works out. Okay, now, uh, can we activate this? Okay, well, that's good. It's not got enough power to get us to orbit, though. power or uh, or delta V so anyway but we can light it so that's more than we could say for the uh, for the NK 43 okay uh, back to the VAB I think we'll just assume that this burns up in the atmosphere so here we are again and well it's got its T-tab So I do not understand why it had a problem lighting. But let's humor it. <laughs> Let me uh, see, can I add T-Tab to this? Oh no, I can't. Oh well. Hmm. What do we do now? Everything has got to require that anyway. But what we could do is uh, switch out to this engine, even though it's hip. Oh, well, you know what? We could we could light the we could light the NK forty three immediately. Let's see. Not great. Hmm. 
No, that's not good enough. Well, maybe this is the time we uh, try out fuel cross feed. So we'll light it immediately and we'll have fuel cross feed. Yeah, that gets us to the right number. Okay, uh, I'm going to switch the number of this. We'll call this prototype 2. It's pretty different in some ways. Okay, let's try this. Okay, we're at uh, minimum inclination with respect to the moon again. And throttling up slowly. But we might have communication problems. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the... AIES antenna initially and then retract it. Hopefully that'll help. I don't know if it's really extended or not. I could I don't uh everything is moving so slowly right now I don't want to actually try and peek into the fairing. Okay, and so throttle SAS is on and we're ready to go. A lot more thrust uh, initially this time. Let's see how it works. Okay, all seven is our lit. Waiting for launch clamps. Oh, it's doing this again. Oh, that's why! They had to relight. It took some of the T-tab out of the center engine in order to relight them. And so now I have no connection. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out and add Baikonur as, uh, as a control station. Okay, so I'm back. I've made Baikonur a mission control center, hopefully, assuming I did that right. We are using the non-fuel crossfeed version again. So we're going to try this one more time. Okay, SAS on. And, well, we're about to find out whether this works or not. Come on. Uh, maybe it's just my persistent file is so big and got so much stuff in it. I don't know. Alright, so uh, here we go. Let's try this launch. Okay, that's good. Still have to figure out what's with the launch clamps. I wonder if the stock launch clamps have this problem. Or whether it's just faster launch clamps. Okay, launch clamps are off, but we've still got communication. It's actually got a thrust weight ratio of 1.2, so this should not be... I mean, it just looks slow, but we've got that lag going for us. Looking good so far, but let's check the T-tab on the NK-43, if that's possible. Ah. Oh no, uh, they, they took the T-tab from the NK-43 anyway. Is there a way to transfer T-tab from uh, one to the other? Okay, yes, there is. Okay, so let's transfer T-Tab. Eh, it's alright. We've, we've got enough to light it now. Okay, so 85. Let's execute that. So, pitch program. Okay, so far I've uh, done the flight path uh, basically the same as on the first try and everything's worked out about the same. And it's time to uh, take a look at lighting our core stage as the, as the G-forces creep up. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, very good. So that is on. 
That should provide helpful stability as the boosters run out and of course the g-forces go up. Okay, booster out. Going to full throttle on the NK-43 and uh, booster set. Okay, nice and clean. Well, actually they left a little bit of spottiness there, but that's fine. Got a bit of a roll. Seems to be steadying out. Okay, I think we're uh, go for fairing separation now. Ah, still have to fix that. Oh well. Wow, our time to apoapsis is going down quickly. And I think it's the extra mass of the fairings or something. Let's see now. Well, no, I guess that's about right. Okay. Thought I had this configured a little bit better than that, but I guess not. Let's go to 30 degrees then. Gonna extend the AIES antenna that I always use. Hope it's okay in there. So yeah, not uh, not what I expected with this uh, phase of the launch. I probably uh, messed up because I thought I would be lighting it a lot sooner than I actually did when I made the initial figuring. We'll be fine though. Well, this is why we do initial tests and so clearly have the wrong flight path here. Here I'm going to use the throttling of this engine, uh, though not that much. Yeah, about there. It's so nice to throttle your engine in uh, in realism overhaul. Okay, so we're gonna probably end up low at one end. We'll see. Yeah, okay. Well, but that's not necessarily a problem because of the transfer to the moon. Let's see about that. Okay, the moon's there. Ah, unfortunately our ascending and descending node are not helpful. But our apoapsis is okay. Okay, timing's a bit off, but uh, we need to uh, rush on this. So let me uh, start this out here. At least those are sort of falling off. All right, so separation. And engine okay good and we can go full throttle on that I don't think this one throttles so whoa whoa what was that sound oh guess it was not a problematic sound huh Wait a minute. Oh, our antenna never went out. Okay. Well, let's activate that now. Hello, did you hear me? Okay, it's active. But no, that's not the one I wanted to activate. Activate. 
Huh, it's not activating. Okay, well, we're gonna have to go to this antenna then. Uh, let's say... Wow. Good question. I mean... I don't know where I should connect to at this point. Well, we should take a look at that. I keep hearing very weird sound effects. As if I didn't have enough glitches. Weird. So now I've got those sound effects for some reason. Okay, I think a TDRS polar is our best bet. Activate does not seem to be doing anything. What the heck? Since when did we have this glitch? Holy mackerel. Since when can we not activate an antenna? <sighs> Got connection. And it's not the time lag. And then we've got this glitch. Where I hear weird sounds. I'm not a happy camper at this point. It's clearly something to do with this engine, because we didn't get this weird sound in the map view until now. And I've got to fix up my maneuver. Ah, uh, maneuver node's all messed up now. Oh shoot, it's following... Okay, no, that's not what I want. Prograde, please. Ah, oh, crud. The sound is really getting to me. Oh, okay, I really hate that sound. And I can't even make a decent maneuver at this point, so... Well, we're just gonna have to find out. Not the ideal situation right now. I don't even know if I have connection uh, through my maneuvers. In any case, it seems like we've got uh, bigger problems. The mid-course plane change is like uh, costing 2,000 meters per second. Clearly, we did not do this at the right timing. So I'm going to have to figure that out as well. Right now... Oh, sound. I've got it plotted for a 10,000 kilometer approach, which is way high, but... Um, we're not going to make that anyway because of the inclination issues. Got to figure out... Yeah, I mean, obviously it's best to do the inclination, I mean, the plane change at the same time as the initial burn, uh, the, the TLI. You know, I think we've boosted our orbit enough. I'm going to hope that I can maintain connection. And let me replot for that situation try and get... Okay, I've got to take my headphones off and plot this. Okay, I have a minimally viable approach but at a very high very high approach, uh, 23,000 kilometers, but it'll still be for the first attempt at the moon from Baikonur, it's not too bad. So, uh, I'll go with that. Now I'm getting the sound in this view. I don't have anything on. Why am I getting this sound? And s yeah. F 
flight computer throttling back time warp. Who told you to do anything? Oh, now it's... what? Why does it have all of this stuff? It's delaying every signal? Well, this probably explains why none of this is activating. So, Flight Computer has come up with a new way to mess with me. That's interesting. And it's preventing me from time warping. Impressive. I think I've had enough... Uh, flight Computer, if I could use... Is there a way to use a remote tech without Flight Computer? I guess just turning off signal delay should get rid of all this mess. Is that right? Because I'm at my wit's end with this thing. What is it doing anyway? I mean, we've got a less than one second signal delay here, and it's got all this stuff. It's clearly preventing me from uh, using my dishes. And I can't time warp because of it. Can't even physical time warp because of it. Let me try it without... nope. Even uh, with Smart ESS not on. And if you want to add to the list of bugs that we see here, as if we didn't... as if we needed any more, why does this have four jettison buttons? I mean, really. That seems rather suspicious, doesn't it? Huh. I, I can only wait, of course, because... Oh, wait. Nope. Can't time warp. Can't time warp. Can't time warp. Can't time warp. Okay, I'm done waiting. I'm just gonna light it. Let's see if it's stable. Okay, very stable. Doesn't actually throttle. Okay. So off we go on a very high approach to the moon, but again, first try. And I'll, I'll refine it, figure out when the right timing to uh, get to the moon is. Clearly this was not uh, ideal. Just minimizing inclination isn't sufficient. We have to get the ascending and descending nodes in the right place. So that's a bit more complicated. But I've got other bugs to crush before I even think about that. Probably signal delay is going to go at this point. I mean I can't deal with not being able to extend antennas or I don't even know how we're connected right now. I mean TDRS Polar I don't know what the range of it is but we're awful lucky to be connected at all. Okay, I've turned it off because obviously we got some sort of encounter with the moon. Not at all a good encounter. Oh, I'm gonna get away from this. But uh, I'm under duress here. So at least we got an encounter with the moon which shows that it is possible to launch from Baikonur without uh, using too much more Delta V than we normally plan for, which is a good sign. Um, but I have to make adjustments to the timing. If somebody could tell me what's up with this noise, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, I'm going to turn off signal delay. Uh, I can't have this. I don't even know how we're connected to anything right now. Because um, TDRS Polar well, okay, uh, we're, we're through Aurora Valley, but, but what's the antenna that's on? The only antenna that we have active, as far as I know, has a range of a thousand kilometers, and that shouldn't have been enough to connect to TRS Polar initially. This one was the only one that was on. So, I don't know. I do not understand this. And I'm going to have to contemplate exactly what to do about uh, this situation, but... My goal is to uh, launch out of Baikonur and get a probe around the moon and perhaps a probe that can land on the moon. We've 
demonstrate the ability to launch a 10 ton payload, technically 13 tons, but a lot of that's actually the base, the fairing base. Uh, so 10 ton uh, payload, and that's a lot. That that can do quite a bit for us if we uh, if we choose to pursue it. So. Yep, I will uh, try and figure all this out and uh, we will see what I come up with next. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.